Dyers. We got Whisper Dyers, man, with some crazy stories, man. Um, I hit y'all with a video earlier. Um, I mean, y'all with another video now. Yeah. Two, you know what I'm saying? We're doing two videos in one day. I don't know what I'm going to react to tomorrow. I ain't going to lie to y'all. So make sure y'all comment down below what y'all want me to react to. And I'll react to it. I'll look into it and react to it. Let's not go ahead and get into it, man. In 2018, I went through a divorce that left me basically without anything. Damn. I managed to move into a small home, but had nothing to fill it with. I needed furniture, appliances, Lord, literally everything. Lord, you gotta hire money. That's all Obviously, this is a big task to take on, especially financially. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to get some discounted stuff on Craigslist. My priority was on the big things like a couch, TV, and so on. And it really didn't take long to find some deals. I messaged a few people and picked up a few things. And during this process, I found and contacted a seller about buying their TV stand. It was posted for 40 bucks and looked like a super average Shit, wooden my TV stand. Went Amazon. The seller, Matt, was very strict on when I could pick it up, though. Oh, no. It had to be after 9 because of his work schedule, and it couldn't be on the weekend. This time frame still worked for me, but I just found it kind of odd kind how of specific he was, and I figured that was probably why no one had bought it yet. Mm -hmm. I agreed to pick it up on a Wednesday at 9.30, and on that day, I followed through. He sent me his address, and I headed out 30 minutes to his place. The town he lived in, I'd only heard in conversation before, and had never actually been to it, and I soon found out why. Most of the homes were run down, and very old. Even the roads were in bad shape, with a lot of the street lights not even working. Pulling up to Matt's house didn't make me feel any better. Oh, yeah, it was just as run down looking as the others, with only what looked like a hallway light on inside. But you buy a couch from there. I mean, a TV stand, whatever the fuck you buy. You you buying that though? Man, you might as well just went on Amazon. That's the thing about these stories. They don't say when these stories take place. Like the time frame for where no. I sorted out forty bucks and shoved the bills in my pocket. Then stepped out and walked onto their porch, ringing the doorbell. As I waited, I looked around at his lawn. He had stuff everywhere, like garden statues and just interesting decorations all throughout his yard and even on the porch. Then he opened the door. Matt was a tall and skinnier looking man, probably in his 40s. He had a tired look as if he hadn't slept in days, and I could smell booze from his breath Bro. as he welcomed me inside. If I'd known beforehand that this was who I'd be buying from, I never even would have come here, but it was too late for that now. As we walked down the hall, there was stuff scattered all around the house. Damn. Not to the point like a hoarder's home you'd see on TV, but more like an abandoned house that had been trashed by random teenagers. When we got to the living room in the back of the house, okay, he baby. pointed at the TV stand. The room was barely lit making it hard to see what condition it was in. Any chance you could turn on the light for me? I asked politely. Matt didn't respond, been on it but walked over to the wall and flicked on a small lamp in the corner. It was around this time that I got a really weird feeling that something was wrong. And before I even got to look at the TV stand, I heard someone else behind me. Another man had come around the corner, standing next to Matt. That ain't how you, you feel me? Real man ain't know how to conduct business, you feel me? If, if, if we doing the business or, or, or if anything special with me, bro, I ain't gonna lie. If I'm doing some with money involved, I'm bringing somebody else with me, you feel me? I ain't saying who, you know what I'm saying? Just know they gonna have some on them, but, you know, like, we if we buying some shit, like some business shit like that, like, that's, that's business. Don't have nobody else that you ain't told me about. Now I'm finna look at this whole situation suspicious. Over $40 is fucking diabolical, too. 
And I didn't lie. say hello I wiped my ass before the dog. He just watched me. I was really unsure what to make of this and didn't want to overreact right away, but was also getting really uncomfortable as that eerie feeling only grew larger. I was standing there trying to think of what to say or do, but then Matt walked past me and stood in front of the TV stand. They were now on either side of me, oh. facing me, and oh. not speaking. Several long seconds passed Which as is. nobody spoke or moved, before I quickly walked past the other guy and down the hallway toward the front door. As I left, <laughs> I heard them laughing in the room behind me like this was funny, and as I got halfway to my car, the front door slammed shut. Oh. I can't even find any reasons for what occurred that night Definitely. or what those two guys were right. trying to do. Maybe it was just some sick joke they were pulling, trying to get me to freak out. Or maybe it was something more sinister. Oh. I don't plan on finding out, though. I bet you won't try that again. What if I told you for just a dollar down, you could take home a camera, computer, I I'm put your ass. I promise. Man, man, I was I was 23 and I can't and looking you. for a studio apartment to rent. Nigga, could have been up. I was fresh out of college and had almost no money to work with, only making a bit more than minimum wage. So I really needed the absolute cheapest place I could find. At first, I was looking for one bedroom and studios, but over the following weeks, it became apparent that that was just not in the budget. Damn. Reluctantly, I went on the Craigslist and looked at their section for housing. I knew this site had some bad reputation, but one of my friends had a good experience and vouched for it, so I gave it a go. The first day of looking on Craigslist, I didn't find anything. Though I got a bit of hope, seeing there were a lot of listings. They just weren't in my area or price range. I think it was on the third or fourth day that I reloaded the website and found a new listing that piqued my interest. It was for a place a few miles away. I clicked on it and looked at all the details, seeing it was a studio in a small apartment building. The pictures were really low quality like so pixelated that I couldn't see anything. But with everything else seeming good, I sent the owner a message. He replied quickly, and we scheduled a tour later that day around 7. Uh, seven. From our quick back and forth, I saw nothing unusual. Hey man, stop doing these deals at night time, man. They can't come when you available for them coming in the morning time or in public. Stop going to these people. Don't go to these people, how? Huh? One time, well, my, my mom and my grandma did by my car. We had what to do with her, but she, my grandma had her phone on. You know what I'm saying? And my mom. And that's where I get it from. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You gotta have that five for protection. His messages were very you professional. Got, you gotta let him protect yourself. You, you just out here just place. vulnerable. A couple hours later, I got in my car and started driving over to the address he sent nothing, me. Nothing to fend yourself with. I should mention that I knew beforehand that this wasn't a very nice area of our city, but it's the cheapest area. And honestly, I didn't think it was that bad. Y'all better stop thinking shit can't happen to y'all because it will. Y'all gonna be like, oh my god, I didn't know what to do in that situation. Like, dude, on the first door, he ain't have nothing. Y'all better stop doing that shit. Oh shit, me personally, last story, if somebody would have do, do like that, I would have whooped out my pistol so fast and shot both of them. Not even bullshit. Though in hey, I did it. maybe I was just so being naive Wick. because it was my only option. So sweet, baby. Anyway, I pulled up to this rather old looking apartment building. I parked on the side of the street and got out, texting the man that I'd arrived and walking up to the front door. I didn't see the man anywhere, so I buzzed the room and waited for a few seconds, then the door unlocked. I stepped in, greeted by a staircase in the middle, from two rooms on either side. 
Before I even got to looking at the room numbers, a voice yelled from somewhere above the staircase, saying they were on the third floor. Assuming the man was talking to me, I started walking up. At this point, though, I was beginning to wonder why he didn't meet me at the door, especially since he was so professional when texting. As I reached the top of the steps, there was a small hallway with two doors, one of which was open. I walked over and looked inside, seeing a man standing a few feet away and looking over at me. He greeted me and shook my hand, then showed me inside. You but went in? Immediately, I was confused. You went in? The place had a couch. He Man, look, and then they're going to be sure to hide. At least have the shit outside already ready for you to go. You ain't got to check it out. If you want it, you want it, you go, you go. You ain't got to do all that sentimental shit and go in my heart. I don't even like strangers in my heart. TV, chairs, and even food on the counter. It was clearly lived in. Does someone else live here? I asked kindly. The man quickly replied with a short laugh and said no one lived here and everything would be gone by tomorrow. I smiled and said okay, but that response didn't come off the right way to me. He started leading me further in pointing out features of the place, but it suddenly came across me that this wasn't even a studio. There were multiple doors, which had to lead to other rooms. This was at least a one or two bedroom apartment, and there was no way the price could be what he said it was. It seemed like he noticed my suspicions as he stopped what he was saying and moved toward the hallway. He opened one of the doors that was clearly to a bedroom and started telling me to take a look inside. But before I could answer, we were interrupted when my phone chimed. I pulled it out of my pocket and checked who it was. My face went pale, seeing it was from the man from Craigslist asking where I was. What? I looked up in horror, realizing what had happened. And I could tell that whoever this guy was in front of me knew that I'd figured it out. This terrifying oh, moment no. passed, and the guy didn't move. Well, how the fuck did he know? That's the question. How did he know that you was coming now? I mean, sometimes you gotta look at these, these. You know what I'm saying? How the fuck? How the fuck? Or say anything. He just stood and looked at me with a blank stare. After a moment, I hurried out of there and down the stairs, not hearing the guy follow. I got in my car and left. Being so horrified, I never even texted the actual man back as I was no longer interested in staying anywhere near that place. And I didn't know if maybe he was in on it too somehow. Of but whoever that guy was that lured me into his home was so close to being able to probably abduct me. Oh, I don't know, probably. and I don't even want to know, but I never opened Craigslist. Nigga, did you not see Jeffrey Dahmer? Yeah, nigga, he, when he got you in the house, it's GG's. <laughs> That's the gun. I swear to God, it's hey, GG's, bro. You might as well just go ahead. I mean, what the fuck you doing? Shit. Fuck the dumb shit. Don't go in, motherfucker. I was on Craigslist for the first time in probably five years. I I'd just, forgotten about the site, never having any need or useful. I just love, you know what I'm saying? Why y'all probably act like, man, why did you be talking for reaction for the new people? I love just to pick on, not pick, not pick. But I try to give advice. Like, you know, when I would be saying I'm going to shoot, doing type of shit, I'd be dead ass. I'd be trying to give y'all advice because everybody needs to protect themselves for real. Like, dead ass. Like, not like me cutting this camera off and shit. Dead ass. Like, you need to, like, I tell everybody, you protect yourself. Oh, fuck, who you is? Dog, right. cat, rat. I'm not really hearing about no, it. Anymore. No rat. <laughs> but due to my moving situation, oh, I needed to get rid of a so bunch I of random so things. I initially called the junk removal company, hoping they would just take everything. Tech. 
But the rest of it was over four. All the real niggas know what that is. Rid of just a couple of things. They drove too far without no So that's when I went to Craigslist. I get excited any time I feel I put up a listing for free get, stuff. They had about pictures the wrong thing. of all the things I was giving away. Maybe I just didn't know how it worked nowadays, but I thought I'd get a lot of responses from people wanting to pick up free stuff. Huh? However, I barely got any, and the ones that did respond to the listing ended up ghosting me after a couple texts. Then, about a week after making the listing, a man who introduced himself as KJ reached out. He said he wanted to pick up my couch, he was initials. good to do so on any day. KJ. I really thought this was just going to be the same as all the other people that reached out, so I didn't put much effort into getting this man to actually come pick up the couch. I let him know that I worked between 9 and 5, so if he wanted to pick it up, he could just let me know. Again, I didn't think he'd actually come. But sure enough, in the morning before work, he sent me a text saying he'd like to swing by tonight. I told him that was great, and as I left work that night, no I sent him my address. No diddy. The drive home was only 20-ish minutes, but I hope he comes sooner rather than later, because I didn't want to waste my night waiting on them. No diddy. Even more so, they didn't end up showing. No diddy. When I pulled into my driveway, though, a car was parked on the curb right next to my house. Huh? Nobody was in it, and it was the only car parked on the whole street. So it seemed clear that they were at my house. Thinking it was KJ, I quickly got out and ran up to my front door, but he wasn't there. Oh yeah. It was in the back of my mind that this could be just some crazy coincidence, and the car was for someone else's house, but I wasn't convinced. I got inside and sent a text to KJ, asking what his ETA was. Then I stood by the window and looked outside. After ten or so minutes, I still hadn't gotten a response. I didn't see anyone outside either, so I calmed myself down and turned away from the window. I went to the kitchen, pouring myself a drink and just standing there, when a small thud sounded from upstairs. Unaware of what it was, he ain't no shit. I put my drink down and listened. Now what you gonna do? There were a few seconds of silence. Then suddenly, heavy footsteps were running down the stairs. I was so caught off guard, I just stood where I was and stared down the hallway as a man appeared at the other end, running right to the front door. He swung it open and ran out. And when I made it to the front, he was already driving away in that car that was parked on the curb. I was still stunned, trying to process what happened, because it was all so sudden and quick. Eventually, I got my phone out and called the police, I think playing then place. tried calling no, KJ, <laughs> but he didn't pick up, which meant to me that it was definitely him who had broken in. You just look at him go. <laughs> when the they found that KJ's phone wasn't registered to her name or address, so we were back to square one. Damn. Fuck Nothing ever did come of it despite me trying multiple times to get the police back on the case. As far as I know, nothing was stolen, so maybe he didn't have- Rada, 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 he ain't do shit. Um, these stars was neck- they, they just doing shit just to be doing shit, man. Go to the friends and stuff. You can make a couple payments. You can make a couple payments a, a week or so to goddamn, you feel me? God damn, man. That being said, man, wish for diary you did your thing as always, man. I'm gonna hit y'all another video. I'm watching this. Well, it ain't new, but it's new to me. It's called Joe Pickett. You feel me? It's on Paramount. If y'all wanna go look at it, I'll be playing, I'll be putting y'all on some good shit. Y'all be y'all be showing me on Snapchat, man. The people that added me on Snapchat. My social media is description down below. Let's ride. See you when I see y'all, nigga. Let's go.